Hello everyone, it is Jalen and Maria from The Francophile back with another video and we hope you all are doing well. In today's video, we are going to be having a frank conversation about the teaching assistant program in France and some of the realities that come with TAPIF. We have a lot of points to make and a lot of important information, so we do have notes in, right in front of us here. Um, so if we look down, that is the reason why. The goal of our video today is to address some common grievances that we heard from other TAPIFers during our time with TAPIF and give our perspective as TAPIF alumni. So TAPIF is the Teaching Assistant Program in France. It is a program that allows Anglophones to go to France and teach English for 12 hours a week. We did this program in the 2019 to 2020 school year, so everything that we are about to talk about is pretty fresh in our minds and we're excited to share it with you. Before we get started, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on all of our social media. So to give this video like a little bit of context, we're gonna talk about complaints that we saw and the reason that we were able to see so many um, complaints and points that people were bringing up with relation to the program is that there is a Facebook page and it's the same every year in April slash May there's a Facebook group created mm -hmm. for all of the tap peepers and in this group people talk about issues that they might have give good information whatever the case is but there's a lot of people in the group who are all kind of in the same boat. Like he said, it's a really big Facebook group with over a thousand people in it. And since it's a community of peers, people feel really open to share uh, their problems, their successes, and pretty much everything that they're experiencing with the program. And it was a pretty active group. There's posts every single day, from what mm. I remember. Yeah. And basically. still, even though the program is over, we're still getting notifications daily from yeah. the group. Um, so there's a lot to cover. So yes. For these complaints that we're going to be addressing in this video, they're kind of the ones that came up the most often and they break down into different categories. So first we have um, money issues. Then we have the category of expectations versus reality. Then we have support. And these issues talk about like having support from the program. Mm -hmm. um, or a lack thereof. Yeah, and we'll get into that. And then I think there is one more. We called it making a change. So there were people in the group who were talking about uh, changing the program so that it's better for the assistants. And then after that category, that last one, we are going to tell you about our experience, um, which we've done a lot already on YouTube and on our blog, but we will quickly go over that and then maybe talk about some solutions that could help with the problems that we saw throughout the year. One of the things that was talked about a lot in the group was that uh, TAPIF does not pay an ethical wage. When I saw it on the group page, I didn't really even know what that meant entirely. One of the points that we have to make and the reason that this is kind of called a reality check is that you voluntarily move abroad to pursue the work that TAPIF offers. You're not being forced to go to France and teach English. You're leaving your country and you're going while you know the salary the entire time. So it doesn't make sense to me that, that one would say it's unethical. In addition to the salary being disclosed, TAPIF makes it very clear that it's a living stipend. Mm -hmm. um, and that you're not supposed to be able to save, you're not supposed to be able to gallivant around Europe, you're not supposed to be able to, to go out to the bar every night. It's just so that you can have a roof over your head and food in your stomach and have your basic needs met. Yeah. And it's made very clear that if you want to do anything more than that, that you should come with savings. Right. By all means, the program does want you to explore Europe, explore Absolutely. France, uh, go out and really experience French culture, but not necessarily on their dime. They're helping you meet your basic needs, shelter, food, and transportation to and from where you work. Those are some money issues that people mention, but we also wanted to say that when you look at TAPIF, it is more complicated than TAPIF employs me to go to France and teach English. Like, there's so many moving parts. Really what it is is France Education Internationale, 
um, which is the group that puts together all language assistance. English speakers, uh, German speakers, Italian speakers, like they, those people come to French schools and teach their language as well. Mm -hmm. And English speakers are included in that. What TAPIF is, is Canadians and Americans only. That's all TAPIF is. I think they call it the American and Canadian cohort. Yeah, okay, good, yeah. So, like, they, they are not who employs us. So when people are talking about, like, TAPIF needs to do this or et cetera, et cetera, and that's not how it would work even if there were to be changes or even if they were to satisfy whatever demands people are making, okay? So continuing on the ethical wage topic that we're on, the teaching assistant program in France offers a lot of information. So before you even start, they offer it on their website. While you're going through the process, you can look at the previous year's handbooks and then later in the process, they come out with the, the current year's handbooks. And in these, they suggest that people bring money, okay? Because the way it works is that you get to France, you teach for a whole month, and you don't get paid until the end of that month. So you have to live for a whole entire month with no pay. They say bring at least $2,000 for startup costs. This is something that Maria and I, thankfully we were able to do, and we definitely did not need all $2,000 for startup costs. But even if you did need it, you have to realize beforehand they suggest it as a minimum. Mm -hmm. Like, it's the bare minimum. So you can't say like, I came with $2,000 and I used it all up and they told me to bring too little money. Right, and now it's January and I can't make rent and they told me 2,000 was enough. And that's right. not what the recommendation is for. It's for startup costs and that's it. And it's the very, very minimum that they suggest. And it's just a good idea in general to tell yourself, okay, they said bring $2,000, maybe I'll try and save three, or maybe I'll try and save four. And if you can't do that, then you need to really ask yourself, can I survive up until I get paid with this $2,000? And if not, maybe you should reconsider accepting your position to the program. Adding on to that, you have to understand also that you have to live on the salary. And you have to ask yourself before you leave, is this enough for me? Can I budget accurately? Will I be able to make this work? And if the answer is no, and if it seems too little before you even arrive in France, you seriously need to reconsider participating in the program. We have even a blog post that you can read about where our money went. We posted our whole budget for, to help other people. Another common issue that came up a lot in the group was people saying that TAPIF assures you that you will receive government assistance from France um, and that they use that to justify the salary. Um, this is not true. They do not guarantee you that you are entitled to any sort of government assistance. They present the opportunity that government assistance is available for people with lower incomes and high rents, for example, mm -hmm. but they never say you will get government assistance. So when she talks about government assistance, it's mostly, if not always, CAF, C-A-F, which stands for Caisse d'Allocation Familiale. And it is to help low-income individuals, such as people participating in the teaching assistant program in France, to be able to pay their rent. So you would tell CAF, look, I make this much money, my rent is this much, can you give me anything? Do I qualify? And they will get back to you and be like, yeah, we'll give you a hundred bucks a month towards your rent, or whatever the case is. Assistants were saying that they use the possibility of getting CAF, for instance, or working an under the table job as a, as a justification for paying us low wages or unethical wages, which like Maria said, is not the case. There is no guarantee that you get CAF. They even say you may be able to qualify for CAF. It's, it's definitely not something they use for a justification, but rather something they let you know about because you are someone who does not make a lot of money. That's made clear from the get-go. And so they're like, okay, we have resources for that in France. This is what they are and how you can get them if you qualify. They don't say, look, we know we pay you, we know we don't pay you anything. So <laughs> don't even worry about it, you'll get calf. And they also don't say, it's an easy process. You'll do it fast, it'll be no problem. You'll never have a hassle, it'll come immediately. They don't guarantee anything. They simply yeah. say, this exists in France. Uh, you may qualify. So it's not a justification, but rather information that can be useful to you 
uh, as an assistant. And was useful to us because we yeah. applied and qualified and got all of the payments that we needed. Like, we, like I kind of briefly mentioned, another thing that people were saying the program was using to justify the low wages is the fact that you will be able to get a side job. Okay, so with the visa that you would be on for TAPIF, it is a travailleur temporaire, um, which means temporary worker. And you, if you're not from the EU, you cannot get another declared job. Declared meaning the government knows about the job. You pay taxes. Uh, you fill out cetera, paperwork. Yeah, it's, all it's that. It's a real job. As opposed to like babysitting and making cash. That's or tutoring, undeclared, tutoring or whatever. Cash. So again, Tapit does not use this as a justification first of all because it's illegal to to do that at all to do undeclared work mm -hmm. um so they would not suggest that you are going to are or going to get to, it or, or should do it but they do in the handbook say like past assistants have done this and that's, that's it. it you should take that as like ah okay wink wink kind of thing like they're turning a blind eye, you do whatever you do to supplement your income, don't talk about it kind of thing. And I think the important point that people talked about a lot was that they had issues finding kids to babysit or kids to tutor. Yeah. And they were angry about it. If wherever you are you can't find kids to tutor or wherever you are you can't find people to babysit, like. That is unfortunate. Like someone who lives in a big city might be able to more easily find that. But at the end of the day, it's it's a personal issue. Like that's something you have to deal with. If you can't find extra work, then you'll have to really crack down on your budgeting. Or you might have to buy the store brand instead <laughs> of name brands. It's not a tap heap issue. Right, it's not that. a tap heap problem if you can't find it under the table job. And that's kind of the underlying thing about this video is we're, we're addressing these problems because people are taking them to tap heath and like being mad at tap heath. And discouraging people from applying to tap heath. Yeah, when it's it's not their fault. Another thing about this, uh, the wages and the pay is that the people were saying we are paid below the minimum wage in France, which is called le SMIC, S-M-I-C. So the SMIC is the minimum wage, like I said, but there are different minimum wages for different situations. You have minimum wage for people who are, are minors. You have minimum wage for interns. You have minimum wage monthly, yearly, yeah. uh, hourly, okay? Yeah. And so when people say that TAPIF assistants make below the minimum wage, I get why they would say that, but it's not true because no. we work on an hourly basis. The minimum wage in France for per hour work is around 10 euro. And if you break down our hourly work, which is 12 hours per week, our per hour rate is like 16 euros, I believe. Yeah. So we make well above the minimum wage for yeah. hourly work. And the reason that you can't um, compare our wages to monthly minimum wage is because the monthly minimum wage is based on working 35 hours per week because mm -hmm. that's full time in France. So the only minimum wage that concerns us is the hourly one. It's also important for, in our opinion, to understand that tap heath assistants aren't well qualified. It doesn't take a lot to get into the program. You don't have to have a teaching degree. You don't even have to have a bachelor's degree. Um, and so to argue that we deserve to be paid as much as a French person with a certification to teach, for example, that works 35 hours a week, yeah. it's, it's ludicrous. We don't, we, we, it simply doesn't make any sense. We, our work doesn't rise to that level. And we're foreigners who are guests in France. We can't expect to be paid like someone who went all the way through school in France and now has a secure job that yeah. they're gonna be living there forever. It's not, it's, it's not the same playing field at all. So those are basically all the money issues that we came across. Um, one thing that we did do a little while back is post in the Facebook page our budget article to try and actually help people um, who are struggling who are struggling or complaining about whatever it was to be able to look at what we do um, and maybe take some tips from that. And in that, 
we were kind of planning this video slash article. We didn't know if we were gonna write about it or talk about it. Everyone knows how much everyone gets paid because it's not a secret. So we were like, people probably wouldn't be shy about saying what they spend their money on. Like, what is your budget? So we asked people and I think we had 15 responses and every single person was not spending over how much they make. Including people who were very vocal about the wages being too low and them having a hard time. It doesn't really necessarily prove anything because it's only 15 people. Right. But it says to us that maybe people thought that they would be able to save money or pay other bills that were back home or yeah. you know any number of things. They thought that they could do more with their money so even if they weren't you know, spending on a credit card and not being able to make rent, they still felt that, you know, 20 bucks left over at the end of the month means it's not a fair wage. Um, this was another big issue in the group and people were saying that Tapif is only positively represented. By themselves and otherwise. Yeah, like online, mm -hmm. like people like us. If you're looking for honest Tapif content, look no further. We yeah. have videos and we have articles that are honest and mm -hmm. talk about the struggles that we have. So to say that it doesn't exist online, whether it's produced by Tapif or produced by people like us, is simply not the case. Yeah, it's, it's not true. Uh, when you look online, the first uh, you know result on Google might not be why I left Tapif, why I quit Tapif, but if you type in Tapif negative on Google, Tapif, uh, I left, whatever, yeah. like stuff will come up. I've seen it myself. As far as Tapif representing itself. Of it, course. Of, co of course it's positive. <laughs> right. Like, oh, like they, they lay things out in a factual manner, I think, except for on their testimonials page. And like, what is the point of a testimonial right. if not to get people who enjoyed their time doing whatever? Why would it be negative? Of course they're gonna get someone who says, I really had a great time. I got to experience French culture. And the fact is that that person or the people online who are representing it positively, it's not sugarcoating. That is really what happened to these people. Right. They really had a people great time. People really go to Tapif, really love their placement, love their schools, get to travel and have a grand time and want to tell people about it. That really yeah. exists. If you are relying on somebody else to tell you if you'll like it or not, Especially if you're going to the Tapif website and reading testimonials and thinking perhaps this will dissuade me, then you're mistaken. And I think that's one thing that is a common theme in all of this is that as adults, you have to weigh your options. You have to think to yourself, what could go wrong if I participate in Tapif and how will I be able to handle it on my own? Yeah. And that's not going to come from, you know, watching a YouTube video about a trip that someone took to the south of France. Yeah, because I mean, people were mentioning like, oh, all the, they, they act like all Tapif assistants do is travel and, and have a grand old time and go shopping. And like, if you watched our videos, for example, like when we went to Marseille or, or wherever, like that really happened to us. We really right. went there and had a good time and it was awesome. And we wanted to share that with people. But you have to realize as an adult, like she said, in, in, in thinking critically about a move abroad, like it's not a joke, like you're really right. leaving your country and going somewhere else. You have to realize that what you see online, positive or negative, your situation is so individual and everything you see, you could have the exact opposite or right. the exact same, mm -hmm. I guess. Or somewhere in between. Or, yeah, or somewhere in between the same situation or not. Like, um, there's so many combinations of things that happen. Even if the exact same thing happened to you that has happened to us during our program, just the fact that you're a different person and your personality and everything right. would make it totally different how you react to certain things. Like, it's just, you can't look at something like this online and be like, yeah, that's how mine's gonna go. You have to really right. critically think and... And make the decision for yourself. Yeah. And don't rely on anybody on the internet to tell you what you should and shouldn't do. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they won't know your unique situation, perspective, and yeah. experience. Yeah. We touched on this a little bit, but a lot of times in the Facebook group, people would talk about how there isn't any content online about tapi people struggling with mental health issues, for example, mm -hmm. or assistants struggling to budget or have enough money to live. Um, 
And I think our response to that is there's a shockingly low amount of good mental health content in general. And people generally who are going through a really rough time mentally aren't hopping on YouTube and sharing it. And whether or not that's a good thing is a different conversation. Mm -hmm. But as an adult, and especially as an adult who has the privilege of working in France, if you need somebody else to tell you it's going to be mentally taxing to move abroad, you're not ready to move abroad. It is going to be mentally taxing. Yeah. It's going. You're, you you might need to reach out for help with your mental health. And luckily, when you're in France, it's extremely affordable to do so. Um, but looking online for assistants who experience depression, for example, I think it's. I mean, it's just going to be yeah, hard to find. You'll probably have pretty slim pickings um, as far as content about having mental health issues during Tapif. Like it's very very niche. Um, I think there might be a couple articles that I've seen on it. Right, and not um, to say that it's not important, and not to no. say that we don't think content should be produced about that, mm -hmm. because if that's, if somebody made something like that, I mean, of course it would be helpful, but again, it goes back to the other thing. At the end of the day, everybody's situation is unique, mm -hmm. and you, you have to understand yourself. Another thing that we wanted to touch on, I think this is sort of the last part of this expectations versus reality section, is that more than once people in the group said, had I known participating in Tapif would be this hard, I would never have come to France. And I, I just, it sort of shocks me to think that people are under the impression that anything about moving abroad is easy with a program or without. Um, and like we said before, it's it's kind of impossible to know how it will be, so you have to be prepared for anything. And you have to be resilient, and you have to have enough um, introspection to ask yourself if you're ready or not for that. And I think, I mean, we'll say it now if it's not on the internet now, moving abroad is hard. It's really hard. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want anyone ever to say, if I had known it would be hard, I wouldn't come don't come if you're not ready for it to be hard. It's hard. Mm -hmm. And it's also extremely rewarding, but it, it's difficult. Yeah, I mean, everyone's heard it. It's, it's high risk, high reward. Like moving right. abroad, it's, it's difficult and a lot can go wrong. And if it does, like you can be in a really bad situation. Yes. But if things go well and you prepare and blah, 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 you have such a big reward at the end. And even, even if things go poorly, you can be resilient enough to get yourself out of those situations and still make the best out of it and still have a good time yeah. even when it is difficult because we had plenty of difficulties along the way yeah, and yeah. we still had an amazing time. Yeah. Uh, when we say support, yeah. it was sort of a vague term that people sort of employed for just anything and everything that they felt like they couldn't figure out on their own. They wanted to be supported, and we did touch on this before. Tapif is not who would support you. Asking for support from Tapif is not the best route when you are a Tapifer, especially if you're already in France, because the support that you need comes from your school. It comes from your network in France. It doesn't come from the people who organized your application. Like we said, Tapif is the American and Canadian cohort. Uh, that are responsible for getting you to France, okay? Like, that's their job. Once they've done that, like, they have moved on to the next batch of assistance because their application opens in October and you start in right. October, okay? So, and that's not to say that they don't help you at all or they're, yeah. they're not available. We got emails all throughout the program mm -hmm. from the people associated with specifically Tapif giving help and tips and updates and all sorts of things like that. So it's not that they're totally not responsible, that's not what he means. They're, we're just really not under their purview anymore. We sort of change hands and we have a real employer, which is our school and our academy. Right. And that's who we would look to. The point was that when you're in France, like the people in France are who you kind of contact for support. Like if you need help with something, like you ask a coworker. Right. And if you, if you have administrative issues, you ask like the administrative organization right. why something's not going well or whatever. You know what I mean? You have to kind of seek out these things in the country you're in because back home, they have other priorities. And there's a time difference. And in some cases, there could be a language barrier even. Yeah. It's simply, it makes more sense 
to look for support where you can get it instead yeah. of blaming the program for a lack of support. Okay. Um, and just to really drive the point home, we like to say that TAP Heath is not study abroad. It's a program in the loosest sense of the word program. Everything is not taken care of for you. It's, it's up to you. They help you get a job, they help you get your visa, and they send you off to have a great time in France. Yeah. People who are asking for support um, did have some specifics. They said, for example, that they were having problems with their coworkers, um, that they were having problems with housing, that they were having problems with getting social security figured out, that they were having problems with their mental health, and they were taking all that information, putting it in an email, and sending it off to America while they were in France looking for support. And while it's a good first step to know that you need help, but where assistance go wrong is that TAPIF is not who to contact. You have contacts in France. You have an employer, you have a school, you have coworkers, there's a principal at your school, there's people at your academy that you need orientation. There's all sorts of people who are there to help you and who are able to help you with the issues that I just listed. And that those people are not the people who work in Washington, D.C. One more thing I just wanted to say is that uh, being able to kind of seek out the help, advocate for yourself in the French language is super important when it comes to getting support. And people are way more receptive to uh, helping you out if you do that. Um, I think a lot of people contact back home uh, because it's it's English. It's, it's English. It's easier to type up an email and really explain yourself and what you need, but that's not really their responsibility anymore. So you really need to try your best to write um, eloquent emails with nice endings and polite language and try your best to advocate for yourself in French. And if that's what's stopping assistance from getting support, which we don't know to be true 100%, you have to ask yourself, can I speak French? And if the honest answer is no, not really, then that's not a lack of support from Tappy. People were talking about, you know, after making all of those um, points, they were like, we, okay, we need to change the program, okay? We need to get the wages up. We need to make the program safer. We need yes. to restructure the program. Yeah. We want to, we need to make sure that Tappy lets assistance succeed. They used all of this, all of that sort of language. Yeah. Really all we have to say to this is that at the end of the day, I'm not opposed to making more money doing Tap Eve. I'm not <laughs> of opposed course not. to working a few more hours during Tap Eve to get that money or whatever. Or just any improvements, I'm not opposed to them. But I agreed to what Tap Eve said it was back in April of 2019. Yeah. I said I read what you had on your website. I did my research and I want to do it. And if I don't want to do it, I would say no and somebody would be right behind me ready to take my place. Yeah. And that's just the reality of it. Look, the program, we don't think that it misrepresents itself. No. It, it doesn't say it will support you in this or this situation. It, t it really tells you how things are. Um, and you have to be able to synthesize that information as an adult about to move countries right. um, and, and tell yourself, okay, this could happen, this could go wrong, and really prepare yourself for different situations. Um, the information is out there. They have an FAQ page, a website, handbooks, and people online like us and many people before us and many people after us will, will be telling you information about it. So just have that in your mind when you see in your Facebook page people maybe complaining or, or bad-mouthing the program or even saying good things about the program, you have, to be able to, think. you have to be able to critically think, take the information that is important to you and that makes sense to you and, and sit with it. Right. And, um, and you should be fine if, if you do that. Yeah, and I mean, a good example is if you only watch our travel videos and skip our how we finally got our French visa video, I mean, there's nothing we can do. Right, because <laughs> you would, yeah, yeah. So yeah, just make sure you get a, a very well-rounded research and take your time. This is not a program that I think people should be just deciding to do last minute, like many people do, and, and just hope for the best. It could work out, but when it doesn't- It then, really does It really doesn't, and you shouldn't, you shouldn't complain about that, okay? So just do your research and, and you should be fine. 
if you take anything from this video, please heed this point. I think we talked about this amongst ourselves yeah. over and over. Please learn French. This is not to say that you need to do what Jalen and I did, which is major in French in college and pass the DOF C2 before you go. That's not what we're trying to say. Mm -hmm. But what we are trying to say is that, so we've heard, people don't even have the minimum language requirement. You need at least a B1 to participate. And there are definitely people in the program who don't have a B1. And either they know that and misrepresented their French skills, or they really think that that's where they are and they are shocked when they arrive in France and can't fend for themselves, basically. When the program says you need at least a B1, I know it kind of just rolls off the tongue. You need at least a B1, like, you really need to focus on that at least. And if you do have that minimum B1 level, that's good. You'll be able to survive, but will you be able to really live? And thrive, maybe. Right. I'm telling you <laughs> that, like, I'm not, I'm not gonna call anyone out, but we ran into people who we know fudged their French skills, whether it was on purpose or by accident, and it did not work out well for them. No, it and really didn't. Some of the places that this program can put you in are so like in the middle of right. nowhere, One so horse small, town. and people don't speak English out there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> so even in cities that aren't Paris, people don't speak English. So. The point is learn French to the best of your ability. And if that ends up being B1, the minimum, if that ends up being B2, whatever it is, just realize that linguistically you might have some difficulties and you might have some issues. Don't be upset by it. Don't get mad at the program. Just try and get better. Yeah. And you will if you try. Um, we also think it's really important to mentally prepare yourself to live on your own abroad. For a lot of TAPI participants, um, it's the first time that they're living anywhere but either their parents' house or a college residence hall. So it's, it's like their first experience in the real world. And if you aren't ready for that, I can imagine that it would be really jarring. And when we're talking about being on your own, um, I know in the English language at least, you know, if you live with roommates, right outside of your college uh, campus or whatever, like you're living on your own. But like when you do tap beef, a lot of the assistants are actually alone. Like it's just them in their apartment all the time. Right. They don't have any friends. They don't have any colleagues to hang out with. You know what I mean? So alone, alone. Right. So you have to think about that. There's so many things that, whereas before in college or even before that, when I lived with my parents, there's always someone to answer questions, like adult questions, like who is the most adult here that I can ask, but it, and suddenly it's you, and you're in France. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the last one we have is financial preparation, okay? Very um, important. Like, get your money right. Before, <laughs> like, I'm saying, get, get your money right before you go to France. It's really important because you have to live for seven months, okay? If you want to be there enjoying yourself, really thriving like she said earlier, meeting people, whatever it is, you need to have some savings. And depending on where you live in France, where you're placed, your savings amount is going to differ for how much you need. But they say bring 2000 for startup costs. For startup costs. We are going to tell you to bring more. Whether you need it or not, just bring more. And preparing financially is, is the best way to go. That doesn't only mean saving money beforehand, it also talks about um, making a budget for yourself, a realistic budget. You know you, you know what you spend money on, you know if you go shopping a lot, or if you like to stay at home and read a book, you know what I mean? So you have to adjust your budget to who you are as a person and what you're able to, um, save before you go. The last thing that you want to do with all the other struggles that you will have if you participate is not have any money in the bank. Yeah. And even though it might be subconscious, the weight that's off your shoulders when you're not living on Tapif's salary solely, I mean... It does wonders for your mental health. It yeah. does wonders for, for just feeling more secure. Yeah, it wasn't all positive for us. Um, it was definitely 
way more positive than it was negative, Absolutely. but I mean, there's still negatives. And uh, I guess I'll let Maria tell you. Right. I mean, I guess the way that we're framing it is, are there things that we didn't like about Tappy? And our answer is, of course, like, yes. There, we, there are tons of things that we didn't like. Mm -hmm. And even though the positives outweigh the negatives, we do want to touch on them. Um, I think from the very beginning of our Tappy experience, we we had struggles and the first one was with our placement basically we were placed really really far apart when it when we got our placements and i mean we did we didn't know what to do and we were we had been so sure that everything would work out because i mean our applications were extremely similar we had similar qualifications we were placed in the same academy and tapi says that the academies do their best to put people together well again Tappy held up their end of the bargain, they did their best, and they didn't do it. So we weren't placed together, and that was a huge stressor that before we even left for France, we were like, what in the world are we gonna do about that? Thankfully, we were able to get it changed. It still wasn't all amazing because he was in a tiny town, and that's not what he preferred. Mm -hmm. Did you still enjoy it on some days? Of course you did. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, I mean, every day you rode the train or the bus to and from work, and it's not ideal. We had an issue, we used the tips that we just gave you in order to get that issue fixed. And even in that case, a it's lot still... lined up so that the issue could be fixed. Right. Um, maybe I'll tell you. So basically, Maria was placed in a big city. I was placed in a very small town a couple of hours away. And um, there was another assistant who wanted to be where she was placed. And Maria, wanted to be where that assistant was placed because it was closer to my small town. So it it was just perfect that that happened. However, if Maria and I were not able to get that fixed, we would have really had to strongly consider doing the program at all. And yeah. if we decided to do the program knowing that we were going to be in a less than ideal situation, then it, we we wouldn't be able to complain right. about and it. We, and we and never say did. Tech is bad because they were, they held up their end of the deal. They never guaranteed that we'd be placed together. Right. We weren't. And so if we decided to do the program, that's on us. Right. Another thing that we didn't enjoy or that was a a, a <laughs> negative, if you want to call it that, during More the like program. More like a neutral, maybe. Yeah, for us, was the job. Teaching is just not something that we want to do later in life. Um, I know a lot of assistants do want to be English teacher. It's just not something that we want to do, which is fine. And for people who want to do it, that's fine. We didn't necessarily love it. Right. Of course, I had great moments with my students. Like, yes, they're me hilarious too. most of the time. And, you know, the coworkers are really nice to me and everything, but it's just not a line of work I want to be in. Yeah, and I think that I felt pretty similar to that. Like you said, I had many more sweet and intelligent students than the ones that were difficult to handle, but mm -hmm. I just, I mean, it's, I didn't pop out of bed excited to go teach, let's say. Yeah, um, and that's okay. But... <laughs> yeah, and, and, and not only is it okay, it's fun, like it's great. We didn't, it didn't, it didn't taint our experience at all no. to, to dislike or not love teaching. Mm-hmm. We just wanted to point out that we disliked things and we struggled with things and mm -hmm. we ran into issues and it is what it is and we still enjoy the program and so can you yeah. if, if you have a similar mindset. Those are issues that we had that we knew the whole time were not Tapif's responsibility to fix. Tapif did not change our placement. It was our employers in France and I didn't email Tapif saying, I really don't like teaching all that much. What should I do? I I, I took care of the problem myself. I, I, I reached out to my support network. I still planned the best lessons that I could. I still tried to get the most out of my experience. The program is made to give people unique individual experiences. In order to facilitate that happening and to get all the growth and the positive things that come from that, you have to take care of your issues or put up with them by yourself and reach out to the right people when they can help you. Yeah. With everything that has been said, would we recommend Tapif to you? We say yes, a resounding yes. The program's an awesome opportunity. It's great for your resume. It's just awesome. And so yes, we'd recommend it. 
but you have to be prepared for it to still be real life. But if you fall into the categories that we outlined earlier, like I'm not at all confident in my French, I have zero dollars in my savings account, I am not prepared to live by myself, I, I don't think that my mental health can take these sort of issues that might come up, or in more, no. Yeah, we don't, we wouldn't recommend the program for you at, at this, this moment, moment in in uh, those cases. Like we keep saying, this video was inspired from the Taffy Facebook group, which we were glad to be a part of, but we will warn future Taffyfers that you need to seriously turn your critical thinking on and be able to sift through the information yourself. And I mean, if I could give you any advice, this is what I did. I stayed in the group and muted it. When I needed something, I posted in it. When I was looking for an answer to something, I searched it, but I didn't allow myself to be bogged down. It's just general negativity that may have a detrimental effect on you because when people are complaining about things, you might be, you might be fine. You might be content right. and then you see something like, hmm, that is true, I don't have this, or it didn't go as well for me, and you kind of fall into a trap. So, like she said, put on your critical thinking skills when you join the group, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't recommend leaving the group because there is good information right. in the group, and people do sometimes know what they're talking about, but you have to be able to tell the difference when people know what they're talking about and when they're just kind of yapping, like, <laughs> you have to be able to, to critically think. All in all, we know how difficult the program can be, um, and we know how many challenges that it comes with, but we truly and honestly, from the bottom of our hearts, believe that it is an amazing opportunity that will allow you to come into yourself and really grow in ways that like we didn't, I didn't even anticipate. And you can have that opportunity too. If you're able to traverse the, the issues, you will come out better for it. Yeah, that was a good way to put it and a good way to end it as well. Um, that's basically all we have to say on the subject. Uh, I know this video is super long, but if you made it to this point, thank you and really good job. <laughs> and you got some good information as well. Um, but yeah, just in general, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. And uh, just make sure you drop a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, especially if this was helpful to you because this is the kind of content that we put out. And uh, follow us on all our social media. And before you go, we are genuinely interested in what you think. Yeah. What do you think of the topics that we cover? Do you disagree? Do you agree? Yeah. Do you see you know, our point? Do you have any other insight to add? We want to know, so please leave yeah. a comment. We hope this was helpful, and I guess we'll see you in two weeks. Bye.